Here we go. We have our verdict, Savannah. Here we go. Count one, guilty. Count two, guilty. Count three, guilty. Count four, guilty. Count five, guilty. Count six, guilty. Count seven, guilty. Count eight, guilty. Count nine, guilty. Count ten, guilty. Count eleven, guilty. Count twelve, guilty. Count thirteen, guilty. Count fourteen, guilty. Count 15, guilty. Count 16, guilty. Count 17, guilty. Count 18, guilty. Count 19, guilty. Count 20, guilty. Count 21, guilty. Count 22, guilty. Count 23, guilty. I'm pausing because it's coming in. Count 24, guilty. Count 25, guilty. Count 26, guilty. Count 27, guilty. Count 28, guilty. Count 29, guilty. Count 30, guilty. Count 31, guilty. Count 32, guilty. Count 33, guilty. Count 34, guilty. That is 34 felony counts here, all guilty verdicts. Savannah and Lester, back to you. A total victory for the prosecution here. Laura, the jurors obviously bought the prosecution case in full. There was a consideration of whether or not they, they might split their verdict or compromise in some way. That is not the case. It's a total rejection of the de uh, defendant's case, Donald Trump's case. And we're starting to show you some of the, uh, the scene outside the courthouse. We could actually hear it, Laura, as you were reading that verdict. And, and just as you're digesting it, and I know you're keeping your eye on the courtroom as well, what do you make of this verdict? Savannah, it's a resounding victory for this prosecution in a case that they pitched as something far greater than about hush money. The way they tried to cast this case was about the subversion of democracy, and today the jury agreed with them, Savannah. The former president has tried to cast this as a political prosecution, a political hip job by a Democratic elected DA, by a judge that was biased against him. But these 12 jurors, these 12 New Yorkers, have come to a different conclusion. Conclusion, an independent conclusion that the former president of the United States is guilty of 34 felony accounts. You can hear the crowd here. There's a lot of Trump supporters out here that you can hear are very worked up. As I was reading the verdict, I could hear the crowd emotion growing behind me. I'm only a couple yards away from the area that you can see on your screens right there, sort of the, the First Amendment area, if you will. It's just a stone throw away from the press area. It's been growing as the day went on is growing after they heard that this verdict was coming in. A lot of emotions running very high in this city right now. Again, this is the presumptive GOP nominee in the middle of an election year for things that he did, that the prosecution said he did to try to corrupt. There's a lot of passion in this park right now. The former president has alleged a couple of times that it, because of the police presence here, right, the protesters, demonstrators weren't able to come. They absolutely can, and this crowd is growing here. I've been talking to people who are happy about this verdict, people who are devastated about this verdict. You just saw this man uh, with a, a, a passionate plea here. I also just met this gentleman. What's your name, sir? Jeffrey. Spoke. Jeffrey. Um, Jeffrey, what is your reaction as we're all just taking this in right now? Well, we're watching the legal system work the way it's supposed to work in a democracy. Three equal branches of government. No one is above the law. Uh, he was indicted by a jury of his peers. This was not political. Political. This was not Joe Biden, despite the alt-right rhetoric. It was a grand jury indictment and now a jury conviction of his peers. And this is the, the legal system working, and uh, this, is, this is how America is supposed to work. And I feel very happy for America. I feel very happy for democracy, because this is how it's supposed to work. Jeffrey, thank you. Donald Trump is approaching the cameras. This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. 
This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. But the real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. You have a Soros-backed DA, and the whole thing, we didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man, and it's okay. I'm fighting for our country. I'm fighting for our Constitution. Our whole country is being rigged right now. This was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent. And I think it's a, just a disgrace. And we'll keep fighting, we'll fight till the end, and we'll win. Because our country's gone to hell. We don't have the same country anymore. We have a divided mess. We're a nation in decline, serious decline. Millions and millions of people pouring into our country right now from prisons and from mental institutions, terrorists. And they're taking over our country. We have a country that's in big trouble. But this was a rigged decision right from day one with a conflicted judge who should have never been allowed to try this case, never. And we will fight for our Constitution. This is long from over. Thank you very much. Why should the voters vote for a convicted felon? And there you have it, Donald Trump calling this a rigged trial. We're hearing from sources close to him. They do plan to appeal. The sentencing, we have learned, is going to be on July 11th at 10 a.m., um, where the judge has discretion. Uh, each of these counts, my understanding, can carry as much as four years of jail time as well as thousands of dollars in fine. Just want to quickly fact check something that the former president said. Scott McFarlane is with us. Um, Donald Trump has repeated that this was launched by, by the Biden administration, but we should just clarify that so that people don't think this is something that, that Joe Biden initiated. This is a grand jury. And this is a jury of his peers who did the work in this prosecution adjudication. But it's not just Donald Trump, Nora. It's his allies. The House Speaker, Mike Johnson, has just released a statement saying Democrats cheered as they convicted the leader of the opposing party. Elise Stefanik, who chairs the House Republican Conference, said this is a Biden administration prosecution. Not only is this not federal, this is a local prosecution, but this is not a Democratic Party process. But that date really jumps out at me, Nora. July 11th for sentencing. That's four days before the Republican National Convention. Wow. Opens in Milwaukee. Let's let's yeah. take some people okay. inside the courtroom from just a moment, just based on some of the reports that we're getting from media outlets. One is uh, the former president, Donald Trump, unresponsive while the jury was reading the verdict. He was sitting sort of slack in the defense table. Uh, we understand uh, Mr. Trump now looking at the jury. He was, at least, as they were being polled to confirm that their decision of guilty on all counts. The judge is thanking the jury. He tells them that he admires and appreciates their hard work and praises them for their engagement and their investment. Quite typical of judges after a long case. He said, quote, you gave this matter the attention that it deserved, and I thank you for that for months now to cast this as a political persecution against him. And I think it's worth taking a beat here, right? And, and recognizing that whether you like this verdict or not, this is an historic moment. This is the former president of the United States and the current presumptive Republican nominee in a razor close race now coming up in November that has been convicted on these 34 counts and in a court of law. Will he have to serve any jail time? What is the potential for jail time? And what is the, the timing of any appeal? It's a great question, Savannah, and it's something that I have purposely uh, tried not to talk with you about very much during this trial because he was entitled to a presumption of innocence, and so it seemed premature. That's a different situation now that he has been convicted of 34 felony counts. These are low-level felonies. He does not have any criminal history, which means he hasn't been convicted before, and so the judge will be the one who will determine his sentence in this case. He faces anywhere from just probation to up to four years in prison. Now, the fact that he was convicted on all 34 felonies any counts actually functionally doesn't make any difference because they were all the same. So it would be as if he was convicted on one for all purposes. In other words, they're not stacked. It's not four times 34. It's just four max, given what he's facing here. Again, for those low-level felonies, the judge will be the one to sentence him. He will get sort of recommendations from both sides about what an adequate and appropriate sentence would be. He's going to hear from the probation department. All of this, guys, is going to take months and months. This sentence is not going 
going to just happen overnight. And the judge actually making it very clear into the jury that their job was not to consider the sentence at all. That had come up in closing arguments. The lead attorney for the president had tried to argue, don't put this man in prison. And the judge interrupted and said, no, 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 disregard that. That's my job. That's not your job. So the judge will be the one who will bring everybody in in several weeks to discuss sentencing, a plan for sentencing. And then we'll see where he goes with this. I think one thing to keep in mind here is that this is a person who not only is the former president, but the current presumptive GOP nominee. And again, it's just, it's hard to really understate and underscore, I think it's, it's necessary, how unusual this is. This is not any other criminal defendant. As much as people have said that, he's not just any other criminal defendant. And the judge is going to have a really tough situation here in sort of balancing all the competing factors, making sure he's paying attention to the case law, making sure he's paying attention to, obviously, to any past president that applies to these types of felonies and this type of situation. But this, again, will take weeks and weeks and months. And of course, he's entitled to an appeal. This is not the end of the road for the former president. There is plenty on this record to appeal. There are plenty of legal arguments. It's always hard to challenge a jury verdict, but there are plenty of tricky, complicated legal arguments in this case that the former president can marshal in his favor in terms of doing that appeal. And typically, in this kind of a case, the, you're going to hear the former president say he gets to stay out of prison while that appeal goes on. So it's Laura. not as if he would be behind bars or in custody while that appeal is going on. Laura, has the judge made many accommodations acknowledging that this A is a former president and, and B is a presumptive nominee for his party? Yes, in, in one big way, Lester. And the biggest way is that he had 10 separate violations of a gag order. He was ordered not to attack witnesses, and the judge found him in contempt of court 10 different times. I, I say that because any other defendant would have been in a heap of trouble for that. And I'm not oh. trying to discount the fine that he faced for that, but, it, but any other defendant would have faced jail time for that. And the judge went on the record many times saying, please don't do this. I don't want to put you in prison, but I may have to if you continue to violate the gag order. Now, we haven't heard much about the gag order, but that gag order is going to be in place while this case continues on, uh, at least through sentencing. And then we'll see where it goes with that. But he is, as of this moment, still under that gag order.